I can totally see us cooking in this kitchen. I can totally see us cooking like pros with natural gas. Oh, I would love to soak in that tub. I'd love to save energy and money with a natural gas water heater. I can imagine cuddling up in here. Because natural gas heating keeps the house comfortable when we need it. We have to get this house. We have to get natural gas. We're investing in infrastructure to help bring comfort and savings to you. Visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. Yeah, um, you know, today we came out, played defense much better than we've done in the last couple of games. Um, we got a bunch of deflections, a bunch of steals, and that just led to easy offense. And it carried on to the second half. Um, start off with our bigs, rebounding, boxing out. Um, the other team only had three offensive rebounds, so that's something we're proud of, um, and that just led to the win. Thanks, Scotty. Robbie, uh, why don't you start us off? Hey, Scotty, um, last couple games for you personally were kind of tough. I think 12 points in each of them. Um, you know, how were you able to break out of that little mini slump, and um, when did you realize that this was going to be a good game for you? Um. Just staying aggressive the whole game, um, making sure, um, making reads. Um, the last couple of games, um, I had a hurt wrist, so I kind of was reluctant to shoot. But, you know, I've been doing rehab and stuff like that, so my wrist is better. So today I was being aggressive and taking my shots. Drake, go ahead. Yeah, Scott, I mean, you, you mentioned Cleveland a little bit. I mean, how, how much of a factor was he when you were able to use him on ball screens and having a guy, obviously he's different in, than Dylan in terms of the way he plays, um, allowing him to maybe roll to the basket, which gives you another option. It seemed like a lot of times where, whether it be DJ Stewart and Tolu Smith, they would try to double you off of screens and you were able to dish it off to Cleavon. How much of a ease was that to help you know like you had another option, whether it be to dish it off to him or, or be able to get a jump shot off? Yeah, Cleveland was huge tonight. Um, I know in the first half when I had a couple of threes, um, I heard the other team's coach trying to tell them, trying to take me off the ball screen, um, double me. So I knew as soon as that second half was going to start, I knew Cleveland was going to get open on the rolls. I just told him to keep rolling. I'm going to find you. Thanks, Drake. Tyler, fire away. Yeah, hey, Scotty. I guess for you tonight, I guess you guys in general, uh, you know, you had that one SEC win this year at South Carolina, and obviously tonight get another win. But this is a game you guys kind of control from start to finish. I think you guys led it all, but I think 56 seconds it is. I guess, did you guys see there early you had a chance to do something special today? Yeah, of course. Um, as, soon as, I, as soon as we picked up our defense, um, I feel like we just played tougher and harder than them. Um, they were turning the ball over, and I knew we had them in the entire offense. That's all I can really say. Um, once we were getting layups, getting threes, I knew we were going to control the game. Thanks, Tyler. Robbie, go ahead. Yeah, Scotty. I mean, it's been, you know, before the last couple of games, it's been a tough season for Cleavon. Uh, and then he was hurt most of last season, too. You know, how have you seen him kind of keep working through this period over the last year or so? And what do you think, you know, have you seen a change in his approach or anything? Like, what do you think is behind you know, his recent success? I think the biggest part of Cleve's success was his, his confidence. Um, you know, he was kind of in and out the rotation. He just kind of lost confidence. Um, you know, he came to practice every day. You know, he was battling some injuries, COVID, stuff like that. So, you know, coach just kept encouraging him. The players kept encouraging him because, like, we knew he was better than what he was showing us. And tonight he just came and did what he had to do. And the last game, too, against um, Auburn, he was big for us, too. So we're going to continue to keep going with Cleve. Simon, we got one more good one. Uh, Scotty, can you just talk a little bit about uh, Max Evans' like resurgence and how he's sort of really recovered from the way he started this season? Yeah, well, Max, I'll say the same thing with the same as Clee. Um, I feel both of them just lost their confidence early in the season. Um, I think for Max, it was more of just he wasn't hitting shots, so I kind of took him took his aggression a little bit away. But you know, we keep telling him, especially me. I've been telling him like, man, I need you, you need to be more aggressive, and. You know, Max, once he sees one go in, he could go off for 30. So just telling him to be aggressive, and I feel like he's got his confidence back. All right, last one, Robbie. Yeah, um, not to look ahead too much, but um, you guys are playing Kentucky on Wednesday, and that's obviously a high-profile opponent. You almost beat him last time. What's, you know, how important is it to try to keep up the momentum now that you guys have a little bit? And what's your role as one of the team's leaders in making sure you guys, you know, can can string two wins together here? 
Yeah, um, playing against Kentucky, it's another game. Just like Mississippi State, we thought we were going to beat them the first time. Um, so, you know, we just got to keep that defense up. And I feel like we'll be fine. Um, our defense is really our offense, just being able to get easy buckets. But as far as Kentucky, just playing hard again. Um, last time we played them, um, we started fouling and stuff like that, and the game got away from us. So, But I think they're a very beatable team. And as far as me being a leader, just making sure my guys are all – I believe we can win. Um, you know, going into every game, I reckon may not show it, but we believe we can win every game. Hey, thanks a lot for the time, Scotty. Appreciate it. Congrats on the win and safe travels back. All right, appreciate it. Hey, Coach. Hey, all right. How are we doing? Congrats I'm on the good. win. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, why don't we start with an opening statement from you, and then we'll jump right into questions. Oh, man, it's been a pretty whirlwind 24 hours, to say the least. But um, it's been all worth it, man. Again, uh, first off, I'd, I'd like to, you know, address, uh, you know, this issue that, that it came up from the article that, that Joe Rex wrote, wrote. I mean, that was that was totally out of context. I mean, that was something that I was talking about with, with the media when I first got hired. That was never any attempt that, I mean, to to target our fans in any way. I mean, there's no way I, I like to consider myself smarter than that anyway, but, um, you know, he, he called me and apologized because that wasn't the context of, of our conversation. Um, but I just, uh, but this was just a huge win for us, man. With all the noise that was going around, our guys just came in and locked in and kept, kept, kept their foot to the metal of what we're trying to build and what we're trying to do. So I'm super proud of that, super proud of their efforts on the, on the, on the defensive board against a team like that which, um, uh, you know, was, you know, holding that team to three offensive rebounds uh, with the size that they have, I mean, it was just unbelievable. And then we shared the ball on offense and did everything that we need to do to make sure that we put enough points on the board. Thanks a lot, Coach. Just a reminder for everybody to use the raise hand feature, and I'll call, you, call on you one by one here. Um, Robbie, do you want to start us off? Yeah, um, Stack, what's uh, what's gotten into your two seniors, uh, Max Evans and Cleveland Brown, recently? Um, they must be seeing the end, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, uh, they, but I thought they were great, man. Cleveland was uh, just, you know, he, he was dominant. I mean, we just rolling hard, uh, uh, defensive boards, uh, you know, protecting the rim. When, when Even when he didn't block the shot, he was, he was there, um, showing a presence, showing the body, uh, really fighting the post. Um, you know, rolling hard, his roles, you know, just because he, I mean, he may not have scored on some of those roles, but he was the cause of them because they had to tag and had to put, you know, had to be concerned about his role that we were able to get some great opportunities on, on the perimeter. And then once they started to um, pay more attention to those guys on the perimeter, he was able to roll and, and finish a, a couple of dunks at the rim. So I thought, you know, Q came in and gave us a, gave us a few minutes and good minutes in that spot too. But uh, I thought, uh, you know, Cleveland was, was really good all game. Maxwell, he brought the defensive energy, you know, uh, on the perimeter, guarding all of those guys. And, you know, when, when he sets the tone defensively, his offense normally, you know, he finds a good rhythm offensively. I thought he made great decisions um, when he wasn't, you know, shooting the basketball. He still got in the paint and made some good plays at the basket as well as, as some good passes out too. So, you know, we're, we're growing, man. Our, our team is, is coming together at the right time. You know, as we, we go. We hope, hope that we wasn't in the hole that we are in, but we're just going to continue to try to fight our way out of it. I think this is a huge confidence builder against a, a really good team. I watched this team all year, and they do a lot of good things with their, their size, um, uh, their, their perimeter play, you know, how they defend. Um, and I, and I, thought, I just thought it was how the game was officiated great. I mean, they let us play you know, both ways. It probably could have been some ticky-tack fouls called them both ways, but, you know, they, they established and set the tone for us to – in my mind, it's two of the toughest teams in the in the in this league as far as just the the, the, the size makeup and the toughness, and, and they let them play. Drake, go ahead. Yeah, Stack. I mean, as much as the the three point success will probably be be praised, but the fact that you know you trap it in the corners as soon as you know Iverson or or DJ would get it across half court, that this team was you know whether it be Max, whether it be um, Scotty, that forced a lot of problems and a lot of turnovers. You guys get easy buckets first and second half. I mean, how much, how how pleased were you with with that? I was, I mean, I was really pleased. I mean, I thought our traps were great. I mean, we came in and had, you know, high hand. Uh, 
Who that is? Uh, but no, nah, well, we had really high hands in the trap. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I got yeah. The guys. I mean, our bigs were low. wasn't allowing those guards guards to beat them around. And then when they picked up the ball, we had really high hands. We were able to get a couple steals. Made them call a timeout one time. Um, so it was just. That's the that's the initial part of it. We know that those guys want to get in the paint. They didn't really want to get off of it, and we wanted to make them play with you know with their bigs and force them to make plays. So, and I thought our, our energy was great um, for 40 minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to to get back home and and you know watch this film and get ready for our film session on Monday because this is the one where I think we're going to see probably that you know you know you know you're not going to have it for 40 minutes, but I thought we had 35, 36 minutes of good high energy and focus. And that was, and you see the result. Thanks, Greg. Tyler, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Stack. I guess tonight's a game where you guys come out, you know, you know, scored first, I think seven points there, nine off threes, obviously. It was nine, nine to four there early. And kind of from there, you guys kept attacking. I think when shots are falling for you guys, you're obviously pretty hard to beat. You can compete with the top teams in the league. I guess from, from your perspective, what do you see out there when you're, you know, you guys are making shots, you know, Cleveland's doing things he hasn't done all year, kind of everything's rolling together. Yeah, I, mean, I just, I mean, the ball was moving, but uh, but I thought we were smart. We didn't just settle on the perimeter, even though we had some, you know, shots, we put our head down and we got in the paint. Again, like I said, to win the paint points against this team too, with those guys that like to penetrate and how they like to punch it in to, um, to Tulu. Um, I just thought, I mean, we, we were right there, even when they got me, I think, uh, Two had a basket in there. Uh, Smith had a basket in there, but we were right there. We had a body between them and the basket, even when they, you know, uh, called a couple of fouls on us. But um, they, you know, it was just good, good, good energy, good effort across the board. Robbie, you got another one? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, Stack. Uh, uh, the you talked about the the quote from the Rex Road article was the the. Uh, Trump quote, the one that you were talking about that you felt was out of context, were there other ones? And what what was the context, I guess? Well, the context was uh, we were talking about, I think it was about, more about, you know, Goodman and some of those guys when, um, you know, when I when I was hired, you know, about what kind of hire it was and this and that. And that's when I was, was talking about, you know, my playing career and, you know, and being able to be around basketball as long as I have that, you know, you know, I, I, you know, the process that I went through this whole thing to didn't just like, it wasn't just a friend that hired me as what people it made it seem like that Malcolm was a friend, but I had to talk to the chancellor. I had to talk to the board of trustees. I had to go through that whole process to be able to get to this job. And, um, and it's something that, that I wanted. And it what wasn't any, I think when, when you watched that, that quote, you know, it was, it was talking about what happened when we got here, the, the diversity of the staff, it was in no way, was it toward uh, any of our fans? Because none of them was even, you know, I, I didn't get that type of response when, when I was hired. It was from the, the Jeff Goodmans and, and, and those type of guys. When I said you guys, when you saw that, and, and it was talking more to, um, to Joe and, and the media. I mean, it was addressed more to the media about, um, you know, how we came in and, and, you know, how we looked. It wasn't the traditional, we didn't check, check the boxes for, you know, for all that, but, um, just again, like I said, I, I, I think he left a lot of stuff on the cutting room floor when it came to, to that to that to that story. I mean, uh, and, and I was a little reluctant to do it. I like I tell you tell you guys all the time. Good thing about it, I zoomed it. You know, what I'm saying we zoomed it and we recorded it, so it's you know it's it's in the archives to show the context of exactly what was said and, and how we were talking about it. But again, I know journalism today has taken a little bit of a different turn. Um, and, and it's unfortunate that that's that's what we have to talk about right now because we hadn't been winning games. But um, I, I'm in for the long haul. You know, I, I appreciate our fans. I've talked about growing our fan base. Yeah, I said that. You know, of course, I'm with me being an African American. Yeah, I would like to see more. After once we do have fans back, I want to get out into this community, in the Nashville community, to have you know, reach out to the African-American community to have them sitting in the stands as well. We got a hundred people moving to Nashville today. We want to have more of them. Not just, then that wasn't a, a shout on, on our faithful that have been there for 50 years. I, like I said, I love hearing the stories of, uh, 
people, you know, who tell me that I mean, I was I was went to all the games as a kid. I can't wait for you to get it back, right? But yeah, but at the same time, man, I, I understand the reality. I am a black man um, that has one of uh, one of the few power five jobs, and 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 I'm not foolish enough to think that everybody's happy for me, and and every and everybody wants me in this position, and and, and that's what I was addressing. It was definitely no way and in no shape form an attack on, on our fans or, or you know some people were saying that because the fans are booing me when have the fans booed me they hadn't even been in the games this year so it's just like it's it's, it's funny some of the some of the things that are said but let the please let these um, our fans know that i am you know i appreciate them i appreciate their support for our team um, they understand the dynamic i mean of of, of who we are and, and and what we inherit the, the true fans do you know what I'm saying? A lot of comments are talking about our record. No, but I mean, uh, there was never any, uh, I, I don't really feel any heat because of our record because I think people who really watch us and understand us know that everybody on our roster has gotten better. We're improving um, as we did last year. We had a, a totally different makeup than we have this year. We're still improving and, and, and that's evident in, in what you saw tonight. And we're just gonna continue to try to build from that. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate that. Appreciate your time and safe travels back. Appreciate you guys. All right, thanks.